So if I first go with the Refina Power Float. So if I first go with the Refina Power Float and you can see there just felt a bit too soft so I left it another wee while and came back. Very very cold conditions, not good rendering conditions whatsoever. You can see there and let let you just make up your own mind on how you think it's getting on. Like I say, this this footage is raw. There's literally very little ed edit and done here. This is the whole clips of it in use um, so people can sort of make up their own mind. But again I don't think the conditions are great for just rubbing up in general. Um, but I think, you know, I think it's came, coming in well in this middle section here, as you can see. And also, I give out this refined plastic float a wee test out. Again, all raw footage, so any mistake that's going to happen, guys, I'm going to show you it. Um, that's what it's all about. If you're using new, new tools, you got to get used to the new tools. Um, they're good points, they're bad points, and um, what you're doing wrong, what what the tool strengths and weaknesses are. Um, you can see this wall's ringing, no hands, and it's sticking in. Again, you can see me digging in there at the back, and just patting it back up there with the float. Um, but yeah, that plastic float didn't, didn't, for the wall to be so wet and it to be a brand new float, it felt nice. I'm um, looking forward to further uses with the plastic float as well. Um, here we go, another go, a bit of a, a further out angle. Um, one thing you can say about the power float is it feels like a tool you could use all day. There's a bit of weight to it, but it's not too heavy. Um, but just the fact that it's a wee bit mesmerizing that it's floating it in like that. Um, it just sort of, you could look at it and do it all day long. In my opinion, um, you can see it does close in well. Um, again, this wall is not even really ready for a float. Um, this was done in real freezing, not not freezing conditions, but you can see that I'm wearing a, at least two jumpers and a monkey hat, and I don't really like wearing monkey hats, so it tells you that it is cold. Um, but the middle section I felt did rub well on this one. Um, I'm looking forward to using this power float more, testing it. Um, my next use of it will be hopefully in a lot warmer weather, and I'm going to let the render go a little further. Um, the reason that I'm I'm trying to rub this wall is because at this moment in time it will be dark, getting dark at three o'clock, and literally by four half four it'll be pitch black where I am, and I don't really fancy using the outside lights here. Um, I'd rather get it in the daytime, get it finished off. And believe it or not, the wall did not take long to get on and straightened up as well. The background of this wall is this red brick, but there's also painted areas which didn't come off. Um, so it, red brick normally is a high suction, but with the SPR and stuff in the scratch coats and the paint on the brick, I think. I did a real good job of holding it back where I've killed the suction and also that with very very cold weather also has not helped. The top had a lot better drying, I think a wee bit of air was hitting it better and it actually did finish well with the power float so I am confident that if the walls dry up that it will be nice to use and you'll get, you'll get along with it very well. There's two attachments with the power float that I'm using. One is the float, the plastic float that I'm using, and one you'll be able to see later on if you stick about um, is the sponge float. Seems to be a bit more popular, but I wanted to hit it a, a power float first and then a sponge float and see how I get on. I think I did actually hand sponge this wall down um, just to finish it off. And I'm probably use the float in certain areas as well, just to just to be a wee bit gentler. As I'm still getting used to this power float as well, even though this it's the only time I've ever used it. Um, and like I say, I'm looking real forward to using it 
uh, in the future here as well. So, you know, I think there will be a tactic of the way you move uh, that will be more beneficial to you. Um, basically, the strokes you take up and down and left to right. As obviously it spins to its right, it spins clockwise. So there might be a better movement to be able to go to the right and then, you know, co- come along left and then go back to the right. You know, come maybe come along the part you've already rubbed. But um, I do have a wall that I will have my heart set on where I'm going to give this a real big try. I have done rendering before this video, obviously, that you can see. That I the way I get it finished hard, hard, tidy, and what I expect it to look like when I'm done. Um, and I have done a render job after this, and people ask me, Did I use the power float? Which I had to say, No, it, was, it wasn't my job, so I was just in giving a handout on that occasion. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to jump in and be like, Come on, we use this. Um, especially on the early, there is one wall up with that job that I possibly will get the power float going and get a wee video of that um, where it's around the back so you know I could maybe play about with it a bit more where the wall that I did have rendered I think I dropped a picture of it on Instagram if anybody's really wanting to get on and have a look um, but basically this wall was the front of an extension to the front of the, the, the entrance to the extension where the cars and all go past so I didn't want to be having any blemishes or mistakes and the bottom of the wall was very heavy and from the experience I had here is that I wasn't too confident going early with the power float there's a lot of guys on the platform forums and stuff there that say that they can go early with the power float or late it doesn't matter it brings it back for them um, but I, I wasn't just too confident as it's my first time using it so just wanted to do it the old school way make sure I got it right um, but the benefits I think this one has, this is a battery powered power float. Um, the battery I have on it is actually quite a big battery. And that one, I think it's the 8 amp battery I've got from Metabo. Um, that was sent from Rambo Tools. But I just wanted to see if it would fit. That This is actually where I learned that my mate Tape Slayer was right about the fact that Metabo batteries will fit the Colo Mix, the Refina power float. And, and various other other drills Metabo actually fit a lot of drills so basically the two batteries I got going with the power float also fit my Colomix drill so and vice versa the Colomix drill so if I'm ever doing big gables I've got basically I've got four batteries to play with on rubbing up and um, likewise when I'm skimming inside I got four batteries to play with and two chargers so running out of power is gonna be a no goer it's just not going to happen and um, you can see him getting on well here and blasting through it it's closing it in well and like i said i'm, I'm not going to take any of the mistakes out guys um because it's a learning curve you can see what i did there i got a bit cocky a wee bit confident and dug it in pressed in a wee bit too hard so like i say I, i'm still learning with this machine um and you know you you'll never learn if you don't make mistakes you gotta you gotta find out what what your flaws are using a tool as well as what the tool's strengths and weaknesses are and yeah so i had to cut off the camera and fill that wee bit of divot in um but you can see you know you can see for yourselves the way it's working i don't really need to speak it's closing in the holes as well i wanted to go over some areas that were quite sort of no holy where normally I'd be scooping a wee bit off the floor with my trowel and just, just filling them in this stuff. It does seem to close it in well. And there you go, getting cocky and confident again and it dug in a wee bit. So you can see where I filled it on the, the right hand side there. Um and yeah, this is all handmade stuff, not um pre mixed mortar on this one, so it's my own mix as well. So you know, it's one of them ones this was the first wall done on this wee area so I didn't want to not put my normal mix on I didn't want to be tampering with the mix, I wanted to just sort of go there's another mistake, so like I said guys, warts and all here I'm not hiding anything um, I'm putting all, all the flaws in of myself um, obviously I got that bit repaired up and this is me, like I promised with 
shown you is the sponge and I think I got I think I got a nice feel from that sponge. I actually felt like I could have maybe hit the area. I could have nearly just rubbed it up with that there alone. Um, again, that this part of the wall, the bottom half of this wall is really, really soaking wet. Um, I think in the end I did get some papers on it too, just so I could have it finished up well. And of course when I left, it rained when it wasn't supposed to rain as well. So there was a, a bit of staining on the wall <laughs> in one area as well that needed tidied up the next day. But it's all getting painted. This area is all going to be getting painted. Um, I think a brighter, a brighter colour as well because it's a bit dark just with the grey. Um, what you did notice there was I swapped the battery. You can swap the battery. The battery pivots round and stuff, which is handy. And like I said, the, the power float here, the battery powered one, I like it because there's no wires. So I didn't have to be pulling wires and stuff about with me. And you can see that I'm really enjoying this sponge. And like I said, I feel like I could have went earlier with the sponge actually, um, possibly even bypassed the float and just did it with the sponge. Um, but again, that'll be in further uses and further tests. But I wanted to be 100% upfront with you all and honest and show you, look, here it is, here's the wee mistakes. Personally, the mistakes were from me um, going too early. And, and like, like I did say why I was going too early, um, I was trying to beat the light and the temperatures were only going to get colder um, but I did enjoy the sponge on the sponge attachment on the float itself I think I will follow up this video with um, just showing you the, the tool again and like I said it's this is a cordless refined a cordless power float which to me it's it's better just the fact that there's no wire to be chilling about and need an electric like technically I could go on site there with four charge batteries and surely get a full gable rubbed up, no problem with that, I would imagine maybe two, um, with four batteries. And the thing, the beauty about that is, is up and down step ladders, if you're just doing a wee wall, such as what I'm doing here, and you do need ladders or hop-ups, you've no wire to trip over, no wire to get caught around the ladders and tangled and pulled out of the lead and and all them sorts of things. And the beauty about it also then would be is when you're on scaffold, I could just imagine the headaches guys get with the ones with wires of them tangling around the scaffold and and just dropping and just just being it would just be a bit of a nightmare I would imagine. But again, I don't know because I haven't used a power float with a wire, and um, I've only used this power float, the cordless one, once. And what I do know is that I will know more with more uses of it, and I'm looking forward to that. And you drop me comments, guys. Let me know what you think or what you want to ask. Um, I probably missed out tons of information here. I know I have, and um, sure, hit, hit me up there in the comments, and I'll definitely answer you as best I can. I'm looking forward to hearing all the comments.